Okay. Um, thanks a lot for the uh, nice introduction. And it was my great honor to have a chance to um, uh, talk about this topic. Uh, in a pandemic situation like COVID-19, uh, public engagement is critical because we're fighting against invisible virus. We now know that uh, transmission and containment of the coronavirus are mainly depend on human behaviors. When a confirmed case happens, uh, the infected person should be quickly isolated and contact tracing has to be performed to identify those who are in close contact with infected people to prevent further virus spreading. Nonetheless, uh, there could be people without symptoms who can still spread the virus and to protect from getting and spreading the coronavirus, we're asked to actually, uh, you know, they wear face masks and also uh, disinfect surfaces, do not touch the faces and washing hands. From this, we can actually see that prevention and protection measures are closely related to human behaviors. Unlike uh, you know, prior pandemics, uh, we benefit uh, from recent advances in digital technologies. Mobile wearable devices are widely adopted and social media, uh, through, the, through the social media, people are actually uh, you know, spreading information and getting a lot of information as well. And uh, you know, Internet of Things and AI technologies are everywhere, it has become an essential part of our lives. And advanced technologies are built upon like big data and uh, cloud computing. During pandemics, uh, you know, digital technologies provide unique opportunities for crisis communications and interactions by helping not only people, not only uh, you know, to provide better communicate with the public, but also to empower and engage the public. For prevention and protection, digital technologies play an important role in promoting social distancing, personal hygiene, and contact tracing. Then, uh, you know, how can we actually realize this? Since we're uh, dealing with human behavior, it's important to understand first how human mind and behavior works. According to a psychology theory, human mind consists of two systems, automatic mind and reflective mind. Automatic mind is led by intuition and instinct, covering 95% of our behaviors, whereas Reflective mind uh, uh, involves rational thinking, and this is uh, related to slow and effortful decision making. Since human behaviors are large, led by automatic mind, and surprisingly, people suffer from many kinds of cognitive biases. For example, people you know, value present than the future. Because of these, we tend to make less optimal choices in our daily lives. This, in the end, may lead to bad health outcomes or financial loss. So the concept of Nudge is to help people to make better choices by redesigning choices. So this is called the choice architect. And uh, that actually alters people's uh, behavior in a predictable way, which may result in positive outcomes. For example, uh, we can nudge people by guiding our automatic mind. First, we can actually uh, remind people to wear face masks by, by showing this kind of poster on, on the door. And also we can have a mask hanger in, in, on the front of the door so that people can easily pick up their mask. Uh, floor sign also help people to maintain safe physical distance. It's funny, but we can also even ask people to actually wear a funny hat that constantly remind people of uh, the physical distancing. Also, we can nudge people by persuading reflective mind. Government often send uh, you know, text alerts telling people what to do, what not to do, why they should follow the guidelines. Beyond uh, these simple examples, we can systematically explore a behavioral model for nudge design. First of all, we need a uh, physical and cognitive capability for any kind of behavior execution. On the bottom, we see opportunities such as tools, culture, and social relationships. In the middle, 
we have motivational drives that influence our automatic and reflective mind for behavior execution. This model helps us to actually explore three important dimensions for the nudge design for promoting socially responsible behaviors and technologies. First dimension is whether a nudge targets automatic or reflective minds. The other two dimensions are how transparent it is and how forceful it is. Persuasive nudges are mostly uh, transparent and reflective, such as social distancing and contact tracing campaigns. There are also transparent and uh, behavior nudges, such as social distancing markers and tracking systems. There are also forceful nudges that are widely used uh, you know, to enforce social distancing on a street or to perform admission control to places by checking body temperatures through the thermal scanners. Now let's review how we can actually promote uh, crisis communications and crisis interaction with digital technologies. Digital technologies can, all, can be leveraged not only to better communicate with the public for crisis communications, but also to empower and encourage, uh, engage the public for crisis interactions. Let's review some examples for crisis communications. This first area of nudge is to address the fact that people tend to interpret a message differently depending on its framing. For example, for lockdown recommendations, we can use pro-social framing like on the screen, stay home, save lives. Responsibility framing empathize responsibility by saying it's your duty uh, to stay home. Messages can also empathize threats to individuals, to families, or to communities. We can make uh, you know, personal framing uh, by saying avoid getting COVID-19. Also, we can have public framing by saying avoid spreading COVID-19. Interestingly, research have found that uh, you know, public framing is slightly more effective than personal framing. In addition, we can uh, use identity framing. This poster was used in the U.S. to persuade uh, the people in Montana states by saying that you know, we Montanians wear face coverings all the time. There are also other framing methods uh, that utilize speaker credibility, empathy, and social comparisons. Another important nudge for crisis communication is data-driven persuasion with visualization and data storytelling. This is because people want to make informed decisions by better understanding current situations. The COVID-19 information dashboard is the prime example. Many countries use different types of data for visualization, such as simple statistics about newly confirmed cases, death, and recovery cases. This information can be narratively delivered through, uh, through uh, you know, short videos, as is the case for uh, daily COVID data in motion from Johns Hopkins University. In Asian countries, uh, contact tracing is aggressively done and they often release infection routes information of the confirmed cases. This infection network from Singapore uh, can effectively visualize the outcome of mass infection outbreaks. In addition, during pandemics, what we see is that we can make use of novel data sources. For example, we can make use of uh, you know, social distancing estimation by analyzing cell phone mobility data. This highlights that we can actively use different data sources for data-driven persuasion. There are uh, you know, several key issues on crisis communication. First, um, we need better understanding about the technologies, digital technologies. People use personalized media and uh, interaction with the public is sort of fragmented. Paradoxically, it is increasingly difficult to reach out people in the digital world. That's why for effective crisis communications, we need to aggressively explore in the wild large scale testing, just as tech giants do. Secondly, uh, data-driven insights should be leveraged. Uh, we need a digital transformation of the public services. 
fragmented data needs to be actually integrated and processed. New data sources such as cell mobility data and credit card transaction data can be incorporated. And SIMNIT's integration of multiple data streams help us to actually do large scale real time assessments of the human behaviors. Data visualization and uh, storytelling should be explored. Interactive data visualization tools uh, will help people to actually better explore the data. And these tools could be used to enable data-driven crisis communication interactively as well. For targeted persuasions, data visualization and storytelling can be done at an individual level, but at the same time uh, at the community level as well. Along with the crisis communications, crisis communication, we can also promote uh, crisis interaction with the public uh, using digital technologies. Digital technologies can help empower the, and engage the public for behavior nudge. Uh, let us first take a look at uh, you know, social distancing. It's quite interesting to see that you know, people have difficulties in estimating distance. According to uh, recent experimentation, uh, what, what they found is that people uh, overestimate one meter and underestimate two meters. Keeping safe physical distance is not an easy task at all for many people. But keeping safe distance is even more critical in workplaces because when, when infection happens, a facility needs to be shut down for a quarantine uh, which may result in great loss to companies. A number of companies uh, you know, began to adopt smartwatches to nudge workers if they violate the physical distancing. And as uh, Dr. Hazme mentioned uh, about the uh, you know, Amazon distant assistant, real-time video data can be also analyzed to track social distancing and alert workers if necessary. Uh, for Personal hygiene, um, we've also noticed that people tend to underestimate time or sometimes they forget to wear protective gears. In South Korea, the health authority installed uh, this 30 second singing soap dispenser in a public bathroom. When a, when a user uh, clicks the pump, uh, it starts playing a music for 30 seconds uh, so that uh, and make sure that people wash their hands for 30 seconds. And also tech companies, uh, you know, develop solutions for uh, tracking, uh, uh, you know, whether the employees actually wears the uh, face masks or not. Right. So this kind of automatic tracking features can possibly lower the fatigue of the human trackers. Crisis interaction with mobile devices uh, will, will empower people to use their devices to help contact tracing and all the containment. In uh, Korea and New Zealand, QR code scanners are used for people to actually self-check in the places for the later contact tracing. And uh, Google and Apple Alliance developed a Bluetooth-based API for the mobile contact tracing. So each device broadcasts its signals to the neighboring device, and the device actually records that information in their phone. And later on, when the infection the confirmed case happens, that ID will be released. That ID will be used to uh, detect whether uh, the person is uh, exposed to the, uh, uh, to the infected person or not. And that a lot actually deliver to the user. So mobile application also help people to self-assess the current status and uh, communicate with local health authorities during self-quarantine period as well. There are also several key issues for crisis interaction as well. First of all, uh, you know, there is a concern of digital surveillance. Privacy and security mechanisms must be ensured in any kinds of these kind of technologies. And uh, service providers and authorities should ensure trust and accountability of all these services. And any service surveillance mechanism should be transparent to the public as well. And mobile services should be adopted uh, you know, by the public and uh, in order to be effective. Uh, user experience are the key for the adoptions so that we need to really focus on UX issues. And uh, for effectiveness, critical mass, and also the accuracy uh, guarantee are really required. 
both positive and negative should be uh, carefully researched before public release. And mobile technology also creates some barriers for the participation due to the cost and digital uh, literacy issues. Finally, for thriving crisis interactions, we must ensure sustainable usage, possibly uh, by building communities, and also the uh, software lifecycle management with continuous improvements is also required. To summarize, um, during pandemics, I presented that digital technologies provide unique opportunities for crisis uh, communications and interactions. Digital technologies can better communicate with the public uh, by message framing and interaction data visualization. At the same time, we can also help people uh, empower and engage the public for promoting social distancing, personal hygiene, and contact tracing. Thank you for organizing this important event. It was my great honor. Thank you.